Have you ever had a love at first sight affair with a knife? How's it going, everybody? I'm Roll Shambo, the connoisseur and collector of all things sharp and shiny. And I feel like most people have had that experience. No matter where they see it, they find it, and they know. They know. Let me know what knife that was for you in the comment section down below. And while you're down there, don't forget, every time you watch a Roll Shambo video and you don't hit the like button, a knife is born with a weak detent. Only you can prevent weak detents. Smash like now. Today we're talking about the Caviso Kirby Rain. This knife is so good. It's a knife so nice, I'll say it twice. This knife is so good. And it was suggested to me on one of my live streams. If you didn't know, we go live every Wednesday, 8 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. That's 8 p.m. Mountain, 7 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Central, and 10 p.m. Eastern. There we go. It gets crazy in there. Join our live streams. Uh, shout out to Caviso, by the way, for making this review possible. I reached out to them after that live stream and I said, hey, can I borrow one? I have got to check out this knife. Took a month, but they got back to me. And here it is. The knife that was love at first sight. The Caviso Kirby Rain. Let's go. It's time that we talk about what I might consider to be the prettiest knife that I've checked out in a very long time time. This is, of course, the Caviso Kirby Rain. And the reason why Caviso has to come first, and that is because Caviso brought this knife to production. This is initially a custom knife. Uh, the design is a custom knife, and it's so eerily close to the actual custom that it makes me wonder if they could have actually made this as a custom with the purple titanium and the purple dark matter copper carbon fiber if you were to compare this to the custom you would find that it's extremely close and it would be very difficult to tell the difference unless someone told you it's possible that the production version looks more perfect than the custom because it's made by Riot. So it should be no surprise that everything about the production quality of this knife is top notch. Riot does some of the best OEM work that you can find it just about anywhere. And this one is definitely no exception. This specific spec is the fat carbon fiber with purple titanium. And this fat carbon is the purple dark matter. You can also get it in the copper dark matter. Although if that's what you want, I would uh, rush because these are running out very quickly and it won't be long before they are all gone. Now, I'm not sure if they'll ever do another run of these. The Kirby Lambert designs are not very easy to find and they become increasingly more rare as time goes on. So just keep that in mind. As far as the rest of the knife, let's go ahead and get into the meat and potatoes. You're looking at a perfect three and a half inches on the blade length with about 8.1, 8.2 inches overall. And that means that it's going to be a very nicely sized knife. This knife was built to feel good in the hand and it shouldn't be a surprise because most custom knives are made by their makers to be used. A knife has got to be something that fits well in the hand if it's going to be used. It has a drop point recurve style blade with a deep hollow grind. This specific one has a bi-directional satin finish, which I think looks gorgeous. It does of course pick up fingerprints, but that's just kind of par for the course with satin finishes. The titanium also tends to pick up fingerprints quite easily, but you know, if that's going to bug you, it doesn't take much to wipe it off and get it back to its original sheen. Now this is the first knife that I've checked out that has the purple dark matter fat carbon. And it's really, really cool. If you look at those scales, you'll notice that you see the inflections of purple at different angles. There's actually more in here than you would originally think if you were to just look at it head on because just head on or from a distance, it might just look like regular shredded carbon fiber. But in fact, it's not. It has these beautiful purple waves 
that just kind of peek out of there and say, hello, here I am. And it makes for some really cool pictures. So if you're one who likes to take pictures of their knives, this is definitely a really good knife for that because you can catch some nice angles. And now as far as the knife being a knife, because let's be honest, we don't buy knives to take pictures, or at least most of us don't. Um, I don't, although I do enjoy taking pictures. The knife is built for some really slick ergonomics. And that comes from these finger grooves that are built in, as well as just how well knocked down and rounded out the edges and corners are. Just about everything is knocked down to a really nice amount, which makes it feel perfect in the hand. If you're gonna switch up the grip, you'll notice that it works really well in a reverse grip as well. And that nice recurve means that you can stay in the cut for a very long time. It's not gonna slip out. And then when it does, it follows up with a nice deep belly right there. Now, typically speaking, knives like this would not necessarily be the best slicers, but it gets extremely thin behind the edge there due to that hollow grind. The flat is nice and you get this beautiful swedge here at the top, which offers some great cutting relief for those materials that you're slicing through. Now, if you were to look on the inside, you'll notice that there is absolutely zero internal milling. Is that a mistake? I don't know. I, I think it really depends on whether or not you're someone that is, has a strict boundary for how heavy your knife could be. I'll, I'm going to go ahead and weigh it on camera. but. Just in the hand, I have a feeling that this is going to come in uh, just over 5 ounces. I'd say maybe 5.3, 5.4. Let's find out. So on the scale of truth it goes, and it comes in at 5.6. So very close to what I was estimating. No shocker there. Whenever you have a titanium frame with you know carbon fiber bolsters and no internal milling, it's, it's no shocker that it's going to be what is considered a heavier knife but you do get a ton of titanium, including a milled titanium pocket clip. And I really appreciate this, and I'll tell you why. Because it is understated and it lets the rest of the knife shine. The pocket clip should never be the focal point in my opinion. It should just be a piece that does its job and doesn't get in the way of the other aesthetics or ergonomics. And this does a good job of avoiding both of those issues. Speaking of further ergonomic wonders of this knife, uh, something that's pretty cool is that you have this perfectly finger shaped cutout right here next to the flipper tab and the jimping is right here on the end. So if you were to put your finger there, it's right where it needs to be. And the action doesn't disappoint either running on ceramic bearings. The ceramic bearings are very, very smooth and glassy. And trust me when I say just because a knife has bearings doesn't mean that the action's going to feel that way. But on a knife that costs 258 bucks, we would all like to see that, and they definitely didn't disappoint there either. The action is really, really smooth, and it does take a little bit of encouragement because it's so silky smooth, but that's nice because it's not gonna guillotine your finger off. And yes, the proper pronunciation is in fact guillotine, not guillotine, uh, but we'll let that far stand for now. As far as any billboarding, you only get the Lambert logo, which as far as designer logos go, I think that's pretty dang cool. Uh, you get a Black Widow, I believe that's a Black Widow spider, and Lambert, and that's it. You flip the knife over, you don't get anything extra. The only other billboarding that you'll find on this knife is right there on the flipper tab, very unassuming, and it says S35VN. Now, S35 is a wonderful steel, and a lot of people fall victim to, to saying, oh, well, I want the latest and greatest. I want 20 CV. I want MagnaCut. I want this. I want that. And they forget just how good these other steels are. A lot of custom knife makers actually really enjoy using S35VN because it's easier to manufacture, and it has some really nice, well-balanced properties. Something that I haven't covered yet, but we're about to is the inclusion of a floating backspacer. That's what they call this design. When the backspacer doesn't touch either scale, it just touches these barrels right there. That It looks cool and it also serves the purpose of protecting the edge of the blade. And while it's not necessarily a full body length backspacer, it does protect a decent amount. A lot of backspacers tend to just stop right there and they're like, yeah, look, we got a backspacer, but then it doesn't do the job of actually protecting the knife, 
when you put it in your pocket. So yeah, I like that. Would I have wished that it was longer? Sure, but I don't think that this knife needs any additional weight at this point. It does have a hidden lanyard post and it's perfectly placed. That's where if you're going to include the option to put a lanyard on the knife, put it between the scales. Don't drill a hole through a beautiful knife like this just to give people that want a lanyard a lanyard. <laughs> <laughs> I said it, uh, drilling holes in knives for the sake of lanyards is dumb because it interrupts the design properties. The amount of knives that I see out there that have lanyard holes drilled through them, but then no jimping, just bugs the crap out of me because jimping can actually serve a purpose and so can lanyards, but to a much lesser degree. To me, a lanyard is more about making it more pocket jewelry-esque, and if that's what you want, cool, but... I'm, I don't think that the design flow of the knife itself should be interrupted just for that sake. So between the handle skills is my preferred spot to find that. And I'm really glad to see that that's where they put it. Overall, it is in fact a bolster lock. And a bolster lock is essentially a frame lock with a material bolster over it. And bolster locks are my favorite. I actually prefer bolster locks to regular frame locks or liner locks just because I, I love the design. You get the benefits of a liner lock and the strength of a frame lock. Frame locks are more heavy duty than liner locks. And that's why a lot of people actually assign a higher value to them. Even though it's been the trend lately to say that liner locks are better, uh, bolster locks are better. Let's start that trend. And here's why. With a liner lock, you never have to worry about how much pressure you're putting on the handle scales because when you go to flip it, the, uh, the scales will protect the liner lock from being pressed in and making it hard to deploy. With a frame lock, that is an issue because it's really easy to put pressure on that lock bar and either make it really difficult or actually prevent you from deploying it. A bolster lock is the best of both worlds because this bolster is actually going to be there to keep you from putting too much pressure on that flipper tab, and so you never have to worry about that. The extra pressure on frame locks is also a problem because it tends to cause over travel over time and really degrade the integrity of the lock. And so these bolsters are nice because they also help prevent that. On top of that, it just looks freaking cool, man. Um, and again, if purple's not your thing, I totally get it. They do have these in the copper dark matter fat carbon, which looks phenomenal. Uh, they have some in a stone wash finish, which is going to be much more fingerprint resistant, less shiny. But if you don't need it to be sharp and shiny, maybe you're OK with that. And I think that if I was to get one as a user, I would probably go with the stone wash. Although for me, purple is definitely my color. And these dark matter purple fat carbon fiber scales are just beautiful. I love the amount of depth that you get in them. And every time I pick up this knife, I find myself getting more and more lost in the handle scales of this knife. The purple accented hardware is also a nice touch. And for once, I'm actually glad that the pivot itself is understated. Caviso could have had that imprinted with their logo as a single-sided captive pivot, and I still would have thought it was beautiful, but I'm, I'm really glad that they didn't. They stay true to the custom design, and when production knives stay faithful to the custom designs, great things happen. The one thing that I do question is whether or not they could have in introduced some kind of internal milling to bring the weight down. I think at 4.3, 4, maybe 4.5 ounces would have been a perfect weight for this. As it stands, I'm not mad at the weight, but I do think that a five ounce knife is going to be heavier than most people want just because most people don't carry heavier knives. Remember, we're in the age of G10 in aluminum and milled out titanium, so people actually expect their knives to be a lot more lightweight. The fact that this one isn't isn't a big issue to me. And lastly, I want to talk about this jimping. This jimping is, is perfect, and when I say it's perfect, I mean it lines up ergonomically with your index finger and your thumb. So you get a very nice saber grip on this knife. The jimping is not too deep, but it's also not too shallow. If it's too shallow, it'll increase comfort, but decrease the amount of stability you have in a saber grip. If it's too deep, you have a lot of stability, but it bites into your thumb and then it just feels bad. In this case, it's a nice medium and I just love it. So far, I think the design cues on this knife are gorgeous. And for 250 bucks, I don't think that there's another knife I could recommend more. So yeah, 
guys, I don't have an affiliate link for this knife, but I do have the link where you can find the remaining versions of this knife if you want one. And I got to say, if you like premium materials like S35VN, titanium, dark matter, carbon fiber, this is it. Guys, that's all I got for you today. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. Do you think that this knife is pretty? Would you pick one up yourself? Have you already got one? If so, which one? Let me know. If you liked the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, boo-hoo, you know what to do. And if you want to check out more content from this channel, make sure you hit subscribe and smash that notification bell. I'm Roll Shambo. I'll catch you on the flip side.